Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Hardin Valley Academy's first ever virtual student orientation. Uh, we'll jump right into this presentation. Um, so as you guys all know, you've all uh, signed up for virtual for this semester. Um, some of this information is not totally up to date because we changed some uh, our processes, but the bulk of it is and something that's that you see something on the screen that's not quite right. I'll try and point that out as, as we go through. There are three different ways that, that kids will, will access virtual instruction. The, the primary way is what we want. Um, we try to create as many virtual sections of classes as we can. What that means is, you know, if we had uh, 60 kids who needed Algebra 1 to, to take, to search 60 kids who were taking Algebra 1 to take a virtual class, we create two sections of Algebra 1 virtually, so 30 kids a piece in those. We weren't able to meet all the student requests through with our own sections, so when we couldn't do that, we rolled into Quest, which is a district uh, virtual learning program where uh, district, uh, teachers across the district can pick some of those things up. When, that, when those weren't be able to feel that way, we were utilizing the uh, Florida virtual program where we're uh, contracting with uh, Florida uh, virtual to provide instruction for our kids that way. We, uh, are, we believe that the best way to service our kids is through Honest County teachers, specifically hard Valley teachers, and we try to do that as much as humanly possible. Reality of the situation is we've had to try and uh, do the best we can to, to, to meet the needs of all our kids, both in person and virtual. And so through that, we've had to reach out to the Florida Virtual to get some instruction there as well. But the, um, all your instruction from Hardin Valley classes will be synchronous, which means you will the teacher and the students will communicate during first block, if it's a first block class, or during second block, if it's a second block class. Synchronous means you're doing it at the same time. They're in sync together, the teacher and the students in the class. Asynchronous is mean you're doing it at independent times. You may be doing what the, the teacher has created work for the students to do at a different time. Most of the, the Hardin Valley classes will be synchronous. The Quest classes will be asynchronous, which means if I'm a teacher at Carnes High School, I may be teaching a section with students from all across the district. We couldn't make that work uh, synchronously with it across the district just to meet the scheduling needs. And the Florida classes, I believe, are asynchronous as well there. I know it's a little confusing, but let's not worry too, too much about that. That's something we'll kind of get in a groove once we get started. Uh, the objectives of this session is we want to provide a context for students and parents about the one-to-one -one technology initiative. We want to inform students and parents about the guidelines and policies surrounding the use of technology devices. And we're going to communicate the support and expectations for virtual students and families. All right, first off, student expectations. This is just kind of a, a, a overview of our student expectations. A more detailed expectation can be found in this virtual student parent handbook, which is found on the KCS Connect website. We'll point you to that here in a little bit. First student expectation is students will be required to turn on video for all Microsoft Team virtual meetings. That means you've got to have your video on. Your teacher may tell you to leave it on or turn it off, but you've got to pop on. And, and when that teacher's having a team meeting, uh, part of that is around attendance. Now, you want to be thoughtful about what is behind you. Um, and you can turn on a background and uh, if you want to, to, to keep that, uh, to protect your privacy so a uh, teacher and the other folks aren't seeing what's behind you. Um, but you need to be, you have to turn on each and every uh, virtual team meeting. And we want to adhere to KCS dress code, even though we're at home, we're still in school. So our, our school dress code still applies. We want to engage in a way that creates safe and respectful environment for teachers and students. We want to treat each other with kindness and respect. That's just like wood in a, in a, in a brick and mortar school. We're going to follow all KCS policies when utilizing technology. You should not be using your devices in inappropriate ways, and we do reserve the right to monitor all student resource activity. Now, um, if you, some of y'all have decided to utilize your own technology, and that's, that's your right to do that. Um, obviously, we're not going to be going through your personal browser histories, but if you do have a Knox County Chromebook, um, we can see any website you go to, okay? Um, our, our technology people are very savvy, they, and they, they know how to, to dig into those things, so they should not, you should be using the devices for school 
based uh, reasons. And I'm not naive enough to think that's the only time you're going to use it is for education, but you need to be aware that any website you're going to on these devices, we can see it. Check Canvas or other teacher communication formats daily. Teachers will provide scheduled office hours with a minimum of two hours per week. Those will, during our, our, our synchronous classes, that will be built into the class time. Students will be, we, will be required to come to their base school for state exams. Um, those are our state exam subjects are Algebra 1, Geometry Algebra 2, English 1, English 2, uh, Biology, and U.S. History. I may have left one off, but I believe those are, are the ones that at the end of the semester kids will have to come to school in order to take those exams. That is out of the, our scope of control. We're, uh, students are expected to engage in virtual discussion, submit assignments, and maintain the pace of the course. Report any technology technical issues through the tech help desk as soon as an issue arises. And maintain best practices for virtual learning sessions. Best practices, we expect you to maintain them. So here they are. One is consider the environment behind you that can be seen in video chats. And I talked about that a moment earlier. Um, if behind me is a, is a bookshelf of uh, books, and that's fine and dandy. But what you don't want to have behind you is something that's going to uh, uh, expose you in any kind of way, put you in a dangerous situation, or, or you always want to be mindful of, of your uh, privacy. Two, uh, mute audio when entering a uh, meeting and when not speaking. Uh, the more things you have on, the more folks you have their microphone on, the harder it is to communicate clearly, so we want to be sure we turn those things off. Listen to the teacher's instructions on those. Be appropriate and respectful in your actions. Um, there are ways to communicate with, our, with the, the Chromebook devices through chat rooms and those things. While you're in Microsoft Teams, you, you should be appropriate and respectful. You shouldn't say anything in a chat room that you wouldn't want your teacher to read or, or say. Listen to the educator and the individual speaking. You will be asked to speak to the class, just like you would in a classroom setting. So pay attention and listen to those folks. To stay engaged throughout the lesson or the activity. I know it is. it can be a challenge when you know, I'm in a not Microsoft team meeting and I'm not, uh, it's easy to want to drift off to something else, but you need to stay focused and engage in the lesson or the activity and ensure that all work is your own. Don't have someone else do your work for you. Again, our normal academic policies apply with plagiarism. Parent expectations, again, uh, just the, the, there are a more depth a parent ex uh, expectation is in the virtual handbook. Parent expectations, we want a partnership between the parent, the student, and the virtual teacher. All three of those need to be working together. We want to maintain open lines of communication, phone and email with the teacher. Um, teachers, who, uh, when they're working at school, will be able to contact through phone as well as through email. And when they are, if they decide to work from home, should we go red? Uh, where all kids are virtual at that point, we should uh, teachers so should be making those phone calls to parents, um, and we, we do have an expectation that teachers uh, respond to parent communication quickly and appropriately, um, and we would ask that your for, your first point of contact when there's an issue with the teacher is the teacher itself, him his, him or herself. There's an issue in the class. Communicate with the teacher first, and if that doesn't meet your needs, communicate with the. Uh, the academy administrator or the guidance counselor. Check contact. Excuse me, my dogs are barking there for a minute. Check contact information in Aspen to make sure it's current and accurate so that we can communicate with you. Maintain a daily work schedule for the students. The idea that they are just on their own doing work whenever is not good for them. They need to stay in a routine. First block is 8.30 to 10. Second block is roughly 10 to 11.30. We need to stay in those routines just like if we were in-person learning. Create a dedicated space free from distractions. Having uh, your student have a, a specific place they go and work while they're in school um, in the home is, is optimal. You know, just in, the, in their bedroom with all the distractions that may be there may not be the best place. So think about how do you create a learning environment within your home to meet the needs of your students. Ensure students follow KCS policies and student expectations. Um, a lot of the time in, in person, this would fall on teachers and school administrators, but when they're at home, 
it's we're going to need more support from parents that were following policies and expectations there uh keep students privacy private no photos or videos or taking taken or shared on social media what, what we mean by that is if you're taking a picture of your kid doing virtual school do not make sure you're not putting another student's picture on social media okay you may see another student through the camp through the video okay but do not take their picture and upload to social media support your child as he or she engages in the learning by submitting assignments following academic integrity participating in virtual meetings and attending mandatory testing help your kids meet those expectations and communicate any issues or questions to the teacher ask and know your child's username and password if your kid if your child has made and you have made the decision for your child to go virtual you need to make sure you have their username and password should we ever need that ask to see your child's technology device and check the browser history go through your student's computer okay know where they've been that's a good practice whether it's a school device or their own personal devices set and enforce rules for internet and phone use for example you may want to have some time limits for using the internet instant messaging social networking online gaming all those things those ki kids are not allowed to do that during in-person instruction you may want to think about making sure they're not doing those things during virtual instruction uh, if you're in an asynchronous learning expectation this is where you're doing things at different times than the teacher um, and then also synchronous learning expectations where you're doing things together with the teachers you so the, you may want to talk to your kids about what does it look like when we're, we're doing things at different times and what does it look like when we're doing things at the same times. Device use and care. Uh, we are in the, pro in the process of, we've so far given out approximately 1,700 devices. We've got another deployment date coming up on uh, August the 18th. And we're giving out Chromebooks. Okay, a Chromebook, if you're not aware, is basically a web browser using Google Chrome as the web browser. Um, it's not a, a, a full-fledged computer where you can download and install software, everything run through a uh, web browser. Okay. Now they do have, through the web, there are web-based applications like Google Drive, which includes Google Docs, which is based like Microsoft Word, Google Slides, which is like PowerPoint, and Google Sheets, which is the, the uh, sister product of Microsoft Excel. That's where we're, students will be doing most of their productivity work. Everything is stored in the cloud. All their documents, very little is stored on the device themselves. All their documents are stored in Google Drive, which is a cloud-based um, storage system. Our final deployment date is August the 18th from 4 to 6 p.m. That is the last scheduled uh, date. If you're not able to, if you don't have your device and you are not able to come by on that date, um, you will have to create a uh, an uh, individual appointment after that date. We really want to try and get everyone wrapped up at that time. Um, additional resources are available to navigate the Chromebook at, this is an important website. I want to encourage you guys to go to that. It is www.nosschools.org slash page slash 23160. I'm going to pause right here for a minute for y'all to take a picture of this, write this website down, knockschools.org forward slash page forward slash 23160. I'm going to actually go to it. This is the KCS Connect website. Okay, This is kind of your one-stop shop for all the things that you need to support your child in virtual learning. Click on the parent or I'm a guardian, I'm an employee, I'm a student. We're going to click on the parent here. And here are all the help, guys, to accessing Canvas, Chromebook help and Microsoft team helps. So if, you, if your child needs help on Canvas, here's where, where, you, where you want to go. There's a guide. Let's look at that for a moment here with PDFs on some, you know, how to log in, how to create an account, all that kind of good stuff. The mobile app, come back here. There's a presentation, um, which is then downloaded here with create the PowerPoint presentation, how to get started with Canvas for families here and there's also a, a series of videos these are great youtube videos that our folks have made four minutes three minutes four minutes on how to um, kind of start getting into these basic things same thing with microsoft teams 
for you to, guys who don't know what Microsoft Teams is, it's a, it's well, you're using it right now to view this if you're on here live. But it, it, it's a, um, it's similar to a Skype or a Zoom. It's a, it's a way to communicate with each other through through video chat. And here are different ways to sign into it, to connect as a student, all the different things you would need um, as a parent there. And if you're not if you're not getting the help you need, okay, look at the help resources here. Well, and then if you have technology tickets, that's what I'm looking for. Sum submit a support ticket, complete this, and then you will someone will reach out to you and um, get you the help you need, whether they send you to the school or they help central office. That is up to them. All right, now can I make this work again? All right, here we go. We're back in it. All right, so when a student opens up their Chromebook, they've got to log in, log in using their their email. Um, so if your student's name is John Smith and their student ID number is one two three four five six seven, their um, username will be S one two three four five six seven. S stands for student at knox at student dot org, and this is their default password. Uh, the first two letters of their initials. Last four digits of the student ID in KCS. They can change those um, if they need to there. So they log into that. Uh, they should be used only for educational activities. It's a property of Knox County Schools and can be collected and inspected at any time. Students have no right to privacy for any material when using a district technology device. Okay, that's important that we understand there is no right to privacy for students on our devices. We can't go into a personally owned device but if it's one of our devices, you have no assumption of privacy there. If the student's technology device is lost or stolen, you should report the loss immediately to the teacher. Or if the device is stolen off campus, a police, police report should be completed immediately. We can lock those things down. Um, and it, we do a pretty good job of getting it back when we know about them. We have installed filtering software to block social media and other sites based uh, on content keywords. Now, I will say kids are savvy and they will find ways around these things, but uh, so you need to be extra savvy and look and look those things up. Knox County Schools is offering insurance for devices that cost $30. I have four kids in Knox County Schools and I have purchased insurance for all four of mine on their devices. The cheapest repair is $30. So if your child breaks their screen on their Chromebook, it cracks it, it's a $30 repair. So um, at that point, at, you know, the minimum you're going to pay in that repair is $30. So you, the maximum is a full replacement around 250. So it makes some sense to go ahead and, and pay that. You can pay it online or at school with cash or check. Please do not bypass the filter. Uh, like I said, kids know how to do these things, but you should not be doing these things. And parents, you should be aware of what your kids are doing here. Do not use another, another student's username or password when you're logging in. Log in as yourself. If you use someone else's, it can create a whole lot of mess in, in terms of you can, in terms of the student's data and work. We don't want to mess those things up. Do not share your password. Worst thing you can do is let someone else use your account because you, once if you do it, if it's done on your account, you're doing it. So don't share those passwords and do not tamper with the hardware. If there's an issue, submit a ticket. All right, our different technology systems that we have that we're asking kids to be able to learn and, and, and do. One is Aspen. Aspen is used for grades and attendance and communication. That's the family portal or the parent portal piece where you can always, as a parent, view your student's academic progress in terms of the grade book. It is, the, it is the, a wonderful thing. If you ever want to know your student's grade, go into Aspen and you can see your student's grade. Canvas is our learning management system. That's where we keep all the student contact, content, task, and feedback. It is what we know as the student's digital backpack. All the things they need are in Canvas in terms of the assignments, where to get the assignments, how to submit the assignments, all that kind of stuff. Google Drive is where students store their work products, as is document sheets, presentations, and this connects with Canvas and works together. And uh, Microsoft Teams is the video chat where we will use, and it also connects with Canvas. So we try to use, use as many integrated systems as possible. Here, uh, a couple of things for, for to, to help support Aspen, um, ensure that the email and phone information is, is current. 
you want to set all the notifications you can so that you're able to get information. Um, there is a opt-in feature in Aspen. Uh, you have to opt in to get third-party information um, and alerts. If you've not done that, you, you want to communicate with our front office at 960-9690 to be sure you're opt-in to get all that communication. Um, when we go into Can Canvas, you want to create a parent ob observer account so you can see your kids' Canvas and set notifications there as well. Again, those how to do those things are in the video on the, the KCS Connect website. Student, uh, excuse me, Google Drive, check your student's browser history in Chrome and review student work and what they're doing. In Teams, set up a place for students to join their virtual meetings. A, we talked about this earlier, a good learning environment with a, a, a plain wall behind them so that your, your privacy is protected, good lighting, you want no distractions or extra noise and support students to help them get connected through Teams. All right, next topic is nutrition services. Knox County Schools will provide uh, breakfast and lunch for students. Um, the base school, which is Hardin Valley Academy, we will identify the, the location area. We've not yet nailed that down with our food service folks. We've got to get with them and see where the best place is for them as well as traffic flow. You will pick up breakfast and lunch uh, on Mondays and Wednesdays. On Mondays, you'll get two days of food, food for Monday and Tuesday. And Wednesday, you'll get three days of food, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The pickup window is 9 to 10 a.m. Uh, you have to request these meals if you want them. And there's a website to do that, www.knockschools.org forward slash meals requests to request meals. Uh, that way, they're just not making... And like this summer and this spring, we're providing meals. There was no request. You just circled up and got them. And anyone who wanted them got them. Um, you got to request them now. This child does not have to be present to pick the meal up. Uh, if you choose to end pickup, if you're if you have any questions or if you want to stop your meal from coming, uh, email virtual meals at knockschools.org. Meals are available to all students choosing to go virtual. But the cost of the meal is based on the eligibility criteria. If you are a free reduced lunch student in person, you are a free reduced lunch student virtually. If you're a student who pays full price for lunch in person, you're a student who will pay a full price virtually. Um, and the, the application for that is, um, you see the link there, www.lunchapplication.com and uh, www.k12paymentcenter.com if you want to load funds on your student account. I would recommend that if you're a person who's paying for meals, load it up and, and let it run. It's much easier than trying to get, uh, pay kids, you know, little by little. Teacher information. Um, your kids will have four different teachers uh, based on their virtual class schedule. The teacher assigned to you will provide a syllabus for the course as well as all contact information and office hours. The syllabus will be able to be accessed to the teacher's Canvas page. Because you're, every kid's going to have four different ones, we can't give you a lot of details of that, but it all can be found on the syllabus um, and that you can access the syllabus through Canvas there. Uh, support, when you're going to need help through this for attendance and instruction, attendance, it will be taken every day at the beginning of class as evidenced by the students logging in Microsoft Teams. At the beginning of each class in a synchronous environment, the teacher will take a role by, kid, uh, by kids logging in. If you have questions about attendance and your child has missed school, you will email just like normal with the, your in-person learning. This web, uh, this email address, hva.attendance at knockschools.org, and then our new attendance secretary, Ms. Jackson, will get that email and communicate back with you. If your student misses two days in the same class, you should be notified by the teacher. Um, sometimes parents go to work, kids stay home, kids don't always log into Microsoft Teams. So we're hoping they try and work together as partners to, to close that loop up. If you have instructional concerns, uh, again, email your, your teacher first. If that's not, if you're not, that doesn't work, give them at least 24 hour turnaround before your, uh, it's, you know, just because we're in a virtual environment, our teachers are not expected to, to be available at 9 o'clock at night. However, during the work day, they, they, you should get communication back within 24 hours during the work day. Um, so start with the teacher. If that doesn't work out, email their academy principal 
And her, here are all the five academy principals. Um, ninth grade academy, Mike Wise is going to be working in the ninth grade academy. He is used to be in health science. His name is Mike Wise, but his email address is david.wiseinoutschools.org because Michael is his middle name. But david.wiseinoutschools.org, the STEM Academy, Ashley Beeler, who has been our STEM Academy counselor for several years, is uh, moving into administration. So she's uh, the point of contact there. Kelly Ivins is still working BLPA. Ken Dunlap, we've shifted from health from STEM to health science there. And David Combs is still working with liberal arts. For technology support concerns, uh, if you've got some kind of hardware issue, submit a ticket. You can also support uh, contact Suzanne Sherman um, in our library. <coughs> to, so, uh, our library, our media specialist, if you need uh, help there as well. And the technology help desk for the district is 594 1830. If you have any school counseling or social emotional support needs, our, our, your students are still have access to our counselors. Um, we'll, our Jen Beckler, Jennifer.Beckler at nosschools.org is still a ninth grade academy counselor. Courtney.Sanford2 at nosschools.org is in the STEM Academy as counselor now. She's new to us this year. That's Courtney.Sanford2. Uh, Ann Troutman is still in BLPA. Dana Quick is still in Health Science. And Carmen Long is still in Liberal Arts. And there's everyone's email addresses right there. Um, we do need you guys to confirm that you attended this or that you viewed this video, depending on when you're looking at it. Um, in order to do that, there is a Google form we've asked you to complete that you have watched the, what the world, at the Hardin Valley Academy of Virtual Student Parent or, uh, Orientation Presentation. You can go to the, uh, you can type in this website here at the bottom, or you can use the QR code here to take a picture of this and send you right to the Google form. It's super easy. Let's see here. Let's click it and go to the Google form here. I would say my student's first name is Rob Burt. My son is named Robert, so we, we'll go with that. He's actually a fourth grader, but we'll say he's a ninth grader. His parent's name is Rob Spees. And by typing my name, this, oh, this is a virtual signature and I have no more questions. I'm gonna submit that and boom, we are good to go, done there. So going back to the presentation, here we go. We are back here now. All right, well, go back to this. I'm gonna give, give you just another minute. If you need to take that QR code or the Google form link, I'll also send out the Google form link via email. And that's probably, enough time. I do want to remind, I want to thank you guys for attending. Um, this is a new process for us. We're all being as adaptable as humanly possible with this and, and trying to meet the needs of all of our kids as well as meet the needs of all of our teachers and our parents. We are definitely partners in this work together. So we thank you for that, for trusting us with your kids every day. We know this is a time where that's not taken lightly. Uh, uh, allowing us to work with your students is an honor and we appreciate that. And I want to just remind you guys, um, you should know this by now, but I just want to remind you, if you're not a hawk, then you're just prey. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.